Hey there, Internet! Welcome to the Hard on Gear channel, where I discuss and review my used and abused knives and gear so that you know what is or isn't worth spending your hard-earned money on. Here we go! I'm gonna try and get this one done in a hurry so I don't talk about it forever. Spyderco Pacific Salt 2. You have been on my wish list since before I bought my Manix 2, which was kind of the genesis of this whole channel starting. Me searching for my perfect EDC fixed blade, which ended up being the Azula 2 from SE Knives, and then the Manix 2 from Spyderco. But while this wasn't in my top three, I'd say this was probably my fourth pick for what I needed for, uh, or what I wanted for my ultimate EDC slicey dicey folding knife. The Pacific Salt 2 was made for people who live near salt water, like myself, out on the east coast of Canada, and it is 100% corrosion resistant. Dare I say corrosion proof. Now, the old Pacific Salt and most of the old salt uh, lines, because there's a salt version of a few different knives of Spyderco's, then there's the P P Pacific Salt and the Atlantic Salt, and then there's uh, different salted versions. Anyways, they had previously had H1 steel, which I've heard compared to being soft as butter, which I'm hard on gear. That is not a knife steel that is conducive to the way I treat my stuff. So this upgrade, this is the blade steel that I think is pretty much my, what is going to be my favorite blade steel, LC200N. It is 100% stain resistant, corrosion resistant. And on paper, while it might be just a hair below H1. Yeah, so there's H1 on the Blade HQ steel chart. Edge retention, two. It is basically like uh, clay. <laughs> but toughness, pretty good. You're not gonna break it because it's not gonna chip because it ain't got no edge retention. Easy to sharpen and 100% corrosion resistant. LC200N, however, is essentially in the same category. Oh, that is 1095, which is not corrosion resistant at all. LC200N is a nine out of 10, which is a step below. But from everything I've seen online from different tests and people sticking these in water and using them for a long time, you're not gonna get any staining on this. Now you'll notice that the uh, edge retention is way better. We're getting closer to the realm of S30V, S35VN as far as edge retention. So S30V, good edge retention, ease of sharpening, toughness, pretty balanced, not as corrosion resistant. The LC200N is pretty much stain proof while boasting most of the same properties. So we got a five, a five, and an eight. LC200N has got a six, so a little bit lower edge retention, but people claim it's almost as good while being a little easier to sharpen, just as tough, way more corrosion resistant. So. Enough of that knife steel stuff. I'm not an expert on it, just trying to learn as best I can. The LC200N right away caught my attention. It is gonna be a hell of good steel. Now this blade style is the same as the Endura, uh, Endura from Spyderco. Never had one, never used one, but it's a very popular, ooh, no Spidey flick yet. Oh, so close. Damn, very popular blade shape and uh, knife style from Spyderco. Very similar to like a lot of their other military and uh, larger knives. This is as well not a uh, fancier, I'll call it a fancier knife like the Manix 2 or the Paramilitary 2. PM2 has got its compression lock and the Manix 2 has got the ball bearing lock. This is my first Spyderco with a back lock and Spyderco's back lock is supposed to be just as good as anyone else's. It's just a back lock. It's strong, I'm sure not a triad lock, I'm not gonna say it is, but it's not going to go anywhere on you and this thing is built for the water. So if you're a diver or anything like that, this is gonna be perfect for you. Great sturdy pocket clip, uh, FRN handles, no uh, no liners at all because they don't want the extra steel in there to potentially rust. It's just got the back lock and the LC200 blade and the FRN and then the screws, which I'm assuming are all like stain proof and coated and all that. So what this is gonna be for me is a knife that goes either in my fire kit or like somewheres where I'll be using this as a work knife that stays in a pocket. Because the, the Manix 2 was great, but in a, especially in Nomex pants or something where I'll be doing or moving around hills, I got thick thighs and anything in my pockets, in my main, uh, whatever, your main left and right side pockets, it just makes my mobility go right to shit. So this is pretty thick, and to have this in my front shirt pocket, it's a, not a bad place to have it, but I notice it for sure. It weighs down on my neck a little bit, and it certainly does make that pocket sag. This is way lighter. Uh, geez, only a couple of ounces maybe. Uh, I think this is 0.1 ounce light at the moment, so we'll just add a 0.1, so 2.6. Definitely noticeably lighter than the PM2, and way lighter than the five ounce uh, Manix 2 from Spyderco. Not getting the spidey, there we go, a little bit of a wrist flick and I got it. But the uh, spidey hole on this, 
easier to hit even than the PM2 and the Manix 2 because of how pronounced it is out of the way of the uh, handle scales. Phenomenal. So the price, you're gonna get these for around 140 bucks in Canadian dollars, between 130, 40, 50, somewhere in that ballpark. In America, America, you can get her for around 100 bucks, I believe, maybe a buck 10. Just over the budget price for a lot of folks, what I would consider budget, and into the range of getting to be a little more premium materials. LC200N, very new, the last couple years, I think Spyderco is the only person, only company still who are using it, or at least as far as I know, beginning of 2021, they were the only ones successfully working with LC200N. But this is made uh, by, they're designed by Sal Glesser. They've got their Sal or Eric Glesser logo for whoever helped design the knife, and uh, Sal being the father. And Seki City Japan, which is one of their main factories. They do some knives in America, like the Paramilitary 2 and the Manix 2. This is my first overseas Spyderco. But the quality and everything's supposed to be just as awesome, and I, uh, the feel of this thing, for, again, it's supposed to be a cheaper, lower uh, maintenance knife, so it's not gonna have the same quality and hardware as this, but it feels to be just as reliable. Thinner though and flimsier, but not as bad as I expected. I had got a comment in the YouTube pages and I'm blanking on the name who gave me the comment, but I'll plug it up here with a picture or something. I was suggested to get the Spyderco Caribbean and I had seen it, never really appealed to me all that much, just the looks of it. But after he'd mentioned that instead of this, I could look at that and maybe I'd be more interested. I gotta say, the Caribbean is definitely high on the list. The other cool thing is, not that this is a defensive knife and I do not condone the use of knives as weapons or anything for defensive tactical purposes in Canada because we're not allowed doing that in Canada. But boy, if you needed something in a pinch to defend yourself, if you were legally allowed to do so, which again, I'm not condoning, what a nice blade shape and style, especially if you're into any kind of Filipino martial arts, which you're not gonna go and do all this stuff in a knife fight anyways, right? But I'm just saying, as far as the ergonomics and flow of this thing, like this is a very, very comfortable knife if you're used to a little bit of forward curvature in your blade. And this has a nice, long, slicey, slicey blade to it. And this like modif modified drop footy worn cliffy, not a worn cliff, but a modified drop foot thing. It just looks like a different kind of wounded bird as, me as a metal complex says than the uh, paramilitary two or the Manix two. Let's do some size comparisons right quick while we're right there. There's the PM two, or sorry, the Manix two and the PM two next to the P Pacific salt two, which you can get the Atlantic salt It's a variant of this. It's just got a different, not a variant, it's a different knife but it's got a blunt end on it, so if you don't want to stab whatever you're cutting in the water when you're doing your dive stuff. And let's put the Recon 1, which is closer in size, and the Benchmade 940-2, which is not closer in size, into those spots. And haha, yeah, so those are three different size knives. Pretty nice uh, spectrum there, wouldn't you say? Then maybe we just look at the Rat Model 1. Ah, failed. And Rat Model 2. And they, wow, that's weird. So I don't typically have a lot of color on my channel or in my knives or my gear. That's the first time I've done a size comparison with all that color and variety. The green is the only option you can get for this. It's a dive knife and it's supposed to be high, visible, high visibility. So it does, it's, it serves its purpose. But I don't know that I really would ever pick that if I had other options. If it came in black, I'd probably buy it. If it came in black on black, I'd definitely buy it. This was purchased to be a uh, emergency knife or something that I didn't care if I lost or beat up, something to stick in a backpack or whatever. The Rat Model 2, I haven't found a purpose for yet because it's too small and I don't like it. And the Kershaw Blur, <laughs> I also got in color in blue. First of all, as somebody pointed out to me, I need a blue knife. You can't not have blue knives. It was my first M4, my first Kershaw, also my first blue knife. But it's only uh, right hand pocket clip and I'm left handed. I'll probably never ever use it for much. So I got it in blue. There's some color, there's some variety. That is weird. I don't even know if I like that. I'm not really comfortable with this much color and variety on my channel. So we'll just uh, snap off into a clean table. Cool, so I've got a few more things to talk about, but while we're talking right now, would you mind hitting the like button on this video so the content gets out to more knife enthusiasts and people looking for a unboxing video of this one in particular? Thank you, I appreciate it, they might appreciate it, YouTube appreciates it because it helps their content. In the box, we've got a Spyderco pamphlet, probably the same or so, no, it's, very, it's unique to the Pacific Salt too, cool. 
interesting. And you get this, oh, you can get it in full Spidey Edge serrations as well if you really want to just cut rope and stuff. But it's full serration or no serration. I don't think there's a combo edge. If you need to cut a lot of rope, the Spidey Edge is the way to go. And it's also got a little Spyderco sticker here. High, reliable, high performance. Golden Colorado USA Earth, which is not where this knife was manufactured. But if you look on the Paramilitary 2 or Manix 2, you will see Golden Colorado USA Earth. Sal Glesser, Eric Glesser. Spyderco S30V. Spyderco S30, five, sorry, not S30, LC200N. Again, I am just fanboying over this super hard. Ooh, and I kind of like that grind, almost like the uh, 940 Dash 2, all vertical uh, going up and down there. I don't know if there's a name for that or why it's ground that way. It's a satin finish, but kind of pretty. I don't think there's really much more for me to say other than a bunch of rambly nonsense, which I'm pretty good at doing. So that's it. I really think uh, this is gonna be a new favorite work knife for me. Not gonna be something I beat the crap out of. I'll almost always have something like the Azula 2 or the uh, Topps Mill Spy Elite or maybe even the Mora Garberg or something like that on my hip. So this is not gonna be a beater. This is not gonna be something I use in the same typical hard on gear fashion as I would some stuff like this. The Garberg Bond, you still has uh, gotta get its virgin cuts in other than just the review video or the unboxing video. This thing I'll be carrying, I think for 13 weeks, 13 knives challenge next week, all week. And people are gonna be weirded out at work when they see a, a green knife in my pocket. But I'll be, uh, yeah, testing this out in the next week and I'll let you know how it goes in the coming months as I get enough use and abuse to accumulate some uh, information to give you a review. And a good review that actually is someone who's used the knife for different tasks. I'm really holding off on doing a lot of my reviews until I get more time in with these things as I don't want to talk out of my butt when it comes to the quality or the uh, durability of some of these knives. So once I can tell you for sure that this is a hard use approved piece of gear, which this is not as flimsy as I thought it would be. This is pretty friggin' cool for as light and uh, light and thin of a knife as this is. So we'll see how it goes. I have high hopes for the Pacific Salt too from Spider Co. And uh, when the time comes for that review, feel free to check it out in the side panel or the suggested videos here. And if that's not available yet, there's probably a couple of other videos popping up right here now for you to click on. So feel free to check those out. Thanks for tuning in and all your support and comments. If you feel like there's better knives than this, or if you think the Carrot Caribbean is a better choice, let me know down in the comments. Until next time, thank you once again. This is the Hard On Gear channel signing off.